we do arch architectural visualizations, motion rights, visual effects, uh, and multimedia and sound and everything. Uh, yes, projects we worked on. For example, this image maybe you recognize it. It was in. It's on the Maxon homepage, and it's in uh, in the. I think the quick reference of R12. Yeah, some examples of mu for multimedia projects, low poly modeling, and R visualizations. These are actually the, the the highest towers now in Vienna. This is a newer project uh, we, uh, I made <laughs> myself for Mercedes. It was for the presentation from the uh, of the new A class. The it's it's all CG. You can you can watch it on my uh, on my page. It's very nice. It's all it's V-ray displacement and stuff. It's it's very cool. <laughs> Uh, it took three weeks. It's not another sick project. <laughs> uh, yeah, this is the beginning of the motion ride area in my career. I did this for uh, private uh, use. It's it's a short flight. Uh, maybe I have it here and I can show it later. And uh, my partners back then thought, "Wow, that's so cool. Maybe we can mo do more motion rides." And so Vienna Airlines. Uh, we were uh, doing Vienna Airlines too. And this is the establishing shot I re-rendered uh, for advertising use and stuff. This is the Urania Szene, the establishing shot of Vienna Airlines. Uh, yes, Vienna Airlines is a full CG motion ride. Uh, there is no, no filmed uh, uh, footage in it. It's just 3D and comes out of, came out of the PC. Uh, and it's made for the Viennese Prater. I don't know if you know the Prater. It's a theme park in Vienna. And 2000 and in 2007, the main entrance was rebuilt and the new attraction Vienna Airlines came to life. Um, the clients were Bernie Bess Film Productions uh, Production and Kalafati GmbH. And Bernie Bess from Bernie Bess Film Production also was a partner and helped with compositing and art direction. I was responsible uh, for uh, the landmarks and the closer buildings. I made the digital direction and Florian Wagner was uh, the 3D artist too and, and helped a lot building this whole project. Sound designed by MG Sound, very good studio. And now I show you the, the film. Have a good flight. <laughs> Ah, the sound, sorry. Excuse me. Ah, okay.
yeah that's it <laughs> thank you very much Yeah, before I start, the, the animation of the camera is a little bit weird and sometimes the people think that's not a realistic movement of a camera, but uh, I had to animate it that the people get frightened in the, in the attraction because uh, there are 30 persons standing on a platform which moves exactly to the, to the movement in the film. And uh, that's very exciting and frightening and everything. And they have wind effects and smell effects. And r you really think you are flying through Vienna. It's really, really great. Yeah, the, here you can see the first tests and renders of the platform. Uh, because we are also were responsible for designing the cage that the people can't uh, look out of the sc screen, that they stay believing or that they, they uh, still believe that they are flying because when you look out of the screen and you see the part of the screen the illusion is, is gone and so here I, I made a little camera rig scene that I can go into every person's view and look where uh, what he sees and and stuff yeah here a rendered version of this actually the on the screen there was a motion right from before <laughs> Uh, yes, first of all, we wanted to film the flight, but in Vienna it's impossible to get a flight permission to come closer to the buildings and uh, fly through so under bridges and stuff, or, or even in the, in the underground station, <laughs> it's impossible. We, we uh, tried it to, to get a permission for a small helicopter with 35 millimeter head on it and stuff, but it was impossible. So first they tried to um, film with a helicopter far away from the city and zoomed in and, and stuff, but it wasn't frightening enough. So uh, the second test was with a, a, a crane car into the Hofburg. But when I saw this, I, I told my partner that it's, I think it's better to do it in 3D because he wanted to, to combine 2D material with 3D and this is too, was too shaky to, to... It just was a test, but it, yeah, it was too shaky. So I stabilized it and ma made it faster to test if this is, is a better resolution. Ah, uh, solution, sorry. But it was, yeah, it wasn't that what, what we wanted. And parallel to the, to the whole 2D and filming stuff, we, so my colleague and me, Florian and me, we uh, researched a little bit and tested in 3D and we built the first districts of, of cities and showed the results to the client. And he said, yes, that's cool. Let's do it in 3D. Here you can see just just to impress the the client, <laughs> you can put spheres in a scene. That's cool. Yeah, wow. Uh, here we took a Google Maps map and uh, modeled very fast from the front view uh, of the uh, in the top view. We remodeled the houses and extruded them and projected the map onto it just to test. Here a little bit uh, nearer. Here we tested the RAM, but this was not, nothing compared to that. What what <laughs> the amount of RAM, so the usage of RAM was in the in the end. Yeah, some test renders of the underground. The big wheel we had. Uh, it's in the Prat of Vienna. Maybe you know it is a landmark of Vienna, so I think you know it. And we had it before uh, from a from a job before, and we thought, yeah, we had that, we have that, so it's it's easier to build the whole flight. But it was nothing compared to the rest. But we did not know that yet. Yes, first of all, the the client one uh, told us where he wanted us to fly, and we painted it in, into Google Maps. Uh, yes, you have seen the, the path, so I don't have to show that, really. Uh, 
Yes. After um, painting in the flight path, I had to model and animate the camera as a, and model the, the low poly city to know where I, ha I have to fly and where I can fly because this, the, the streets are very tight and small and short and it's very difficult to animate the camera. The one problem was that the the size of the houses and the facades um, we we haven't had a city yet but we had to animate the camera so the camera uh, had to be adjusted to the to the size of the buildings uh, every day I think it was so we had a block city first for the camera animation and to get a feeling of the of the size of the city and and stuff and when you don't have textures on the houses you don't know how big they are it's uh, so we we made some standard textures and uh put them on you can't see the textures here it uh, here i don't have uh, renders of that it was the block model of Schimbrun and i animated the camera here out of the tunnel over the place and and to the Schloss Schimbrunn. Yeah, and after the time after time, the the more districts were built, and yeah, here we we tested the sun settings too. I think the sun looks very real here. The sun, the situation, the lightning situation. Yeah, and that the client can uh, put his mark on the, <laughs> the flight path. I made a, a moving storyboard. The animation had to be three minutes and 20 seconds that the people, uh, that the guys know how much people can uh, 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 fly with Vienna Airlines and how much money they can make with that. <laughs> Yeah, that's uh, the guy who shoots in the underground tunnel is actually the third man. It's a main character from a from an old Viennese movie. So they wanted to him to be in the in the film. Yeah, it's very low poly, but it's everything is there. And the cloud actually was rendered first before we rendered or built anything because it took the most render time at the longest it rendered a month I think yeah you already seen this Yeah, this scene, the camera in this scene, the camera path has had to be adjusted very often because there were much cars and people and and stuff. It's, uh, yeah, but it's but this was good to get a feeling of what we have to model uh, more detailed and. Where we can, we can uh, model not that detailed. Yes, that's the big wheel again. Yes, and then back into the into the launch pad. We called it. Uh, it looks a bit different and stuff, but yeah. Parallel to the animating the camera path and and uh, everything, uh, with the plane has had to be built and designed. It was designed by Bernie Bess, and this was was the first design, a futuristic, a more futuristic design. Uh, and they already put it into the in the flyers and everything. 
but then they decided to make another another uh, plane so I modeled this one and this is the final uh, the final uh, version of it because there are 30 people on it and not just one like here it's a, weir a very weird <laughs> plane but okay yeah. they wanted it like that then we bought autographic photos um, to start modeling in the top view and this is one part you can buy this is the original resolution and for the buildings far away from the camera it was okay we just uh, painted polygons here and extruded them and projected the, the, this image on top of it and the facades uh, we took other photos and, and uh, UV mapped it onto the object Yeah, and then we went uh, to take. Fo I went out to take photos. Uh, we made over two thousand photos of every building. The cool thing about Vienna Islands, I think, is that it's a uh, exact rebuild of the city. It's not just anything, or, or some buildings are real, some not. It's really, really exact rebuild. So if you know Vienna, maybe you see where your friends live or something. <laughs> It's uh, very nice. The Urania uh, scene. Yeah, I have a to apologize. These are not exactly the photos we took for textures. These th these uh, photos just show the the uh, the places we went to do the photos. This is a photo we made a texture out. You can imagine when you put that into Photoshop and have to mask out the, the, the door. It's crazy. Yeah, that's, the detail is, is impressive of all the buildings in Vienna. It's, it's sick. We photographed signs and stuff. Everything was built by hand. The only things we, we uh, bought were the, the people. They were from Axis Library. The cars, I think, are, is a low poly uh, library, and the trees, I think. Yeah, it was made in 2008, so so I can't remember everything. <laughs> yeah, here, two thousand over two two thousand photos, and every scene we had uh, about 15 scenes. Every scene had about 200 final textures. Yes, here you can see the final textures we used. We had luck with the weather because uh, it was cloudy and very dizzy. We had no shadows in the facades. We had no leaves on the trees, so we just had to remove the stems of the trees. Some things are repeating, you see. But, yeah. That's the way we did it yeah it were a lot of facades we did yeah and for uh, some textures for the houses uh, near to the camera we used cam uh, co uh, color maps uh, um, specular maps and normal maps to get a more realistic look and the first model I did was the Urania model and here you can see the step-by-step -step, uh, work in progress first watch were just boxes and stuff but the test render already looked very real so it was very motivating to to keep on modeling <laughs> it was like playing God and build the city yeah <laughs> no but it was very funny and you can see it, this took 3 minutes and 30 seconds at 19 gigahertz. It was very fast. Uh, at this, with, in this scene I did very much uh, test renders. 
from other scenes I don't have much because the, we ran out of time at the end as that's the final render yes and these are the, the houses built by my colleague uh, uh, very detailed work and there were hundreds of them we had three uh, kinds of detail the near near houses i was responsible for the landmarks and near houses my colleague was responsible for the the middle resolution and for the far away houses i have two scenes here in cinema for d i can show you the the main scene in cinema for d later That's the Urania, ah, this Unica Tower. Yes, and some stills out of the movie. Yeah, here you can see what is 3D and what is 2D. It's it's all 3D, the stones and everything, the columns, or just the statues over up there are mapped in 2D. It would have been too much work to sculpt them out or something. And it, you can't see that in the movie that it's just a plane. And I think maybe it was not necessary to model all that, but it's... <laughs> It made very much fun. Yeah, here you can see there was so much detail in the in the city that I was afraid of missing some houses. So I uh, made a plane, a very green plane. So I saw saw ah okay here there are houses missing and I have to put some something in there. And I love the the quality of the test renders it really motivated to 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 work further you see the underground station from above this place actually never you can see that i can't see that in the movie because the client changed the camera flight path and so you can't see them without trees there were millions of trees in the background I know I don't know if you have seen it but I show you the, vi the film again and you can have a look at that you can see it's all 3d and very detailed here too the St. Saint Stephen's Cathedral here's some detailed tests for far away Yeah, we did much renders. <laughs> and sometimes the weight of the people was not the right and they looked like monsters coming uh, to Vienna. Yeah, and the biggest problem was we were working with the first version of V-Ray in 32-bit. And we so we had just 3 gigabyte of RAM. Uh, yes. So we split the whole movie and much uh, all the scenes in uh, in 15 scenes so it was good to work with and we optimized the textures uh from jpegs to tiffs so that you don't have it twice in in memory and i think the resolution one by one or yeah i don't know how the how it's called one by one or yeah <laughs> A square, a square texture, yeah, a square picture, yeah. That helped a lot. It, it reduced the, the use of RAM from, I don't know, 10 gigabytes to 3. This was really, really cool. Or from 6 to 3, yeah. <laughs> I don't remember it really. It was, it's four years ago. It was four years ago. Yeah, but we managed it and we got rid of these problems. The render farm actually wasn't that big. We had, yeah, it was 
a medium render farm, but it was okay uh, to work with. We had nine single cores AMD. That was the main render farm, and these were workstations which uh, rendered overnight too. And we had a very big uh, machine. It was a quad quad core Opteron. It's 32 gigahertz. But the problem was we had just 32 bits, so we can't use the, the amount of RAM. I thought I think it had 32 gigabytes of RAM, and we just used three of them. Yes, that's just <laughs> where all happened. This is my place <laughs> where, I, where I built all that with my colleague. It, yeah. Now I can show you this is the scene filmed. And this is it uh, rendered. I think we made a good job there and it looks very real. We tried to, to have the real sun too. And uh, yeah, it worked very well. Yes. I show you the film again and at this point. Yeah, the whole project was rendered with V-Ray, but the volumetric light was advanced rendered and some other effects. You can see the trees, it's a vast amount. <laughs> 